You need to protect your files from prying eyes. Make sure the bad guys can't get into them. Encryption is the way to go. It's built into Windows 10, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. If you like what you see here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel down below and click on that bell icon to get those notifications of new content as it comes out. All right, let's talk about using encryption to protect our files on our Windows 10 PC. And when we talk about encryption, you know, it's just, it's almost a scary word. It sounds like something out of a spy movie or something like that. But the, the short definition, right, means we're going to take a file and we're going to run it through a mathematical formula. Don't worry, we're not going to do any math in this video. Uh, and we're going to jumble up the contents of that file and we're going to basically lock it up and we're going to create a key. And that key is the only thing I can use to unlock that content, to unjumble it and get it back out. And so whoever has that key is the only one that's going to have access to that content, right? And so as long as I keep that key safe and keep it with me, then I'm going to be the only one, for example, that can get into that file or whatever it is that I choose to encrypt. So it's pretty cool, and it is another layer of defense that we can add to our, our files, right? And when we talk about layers of defense, you already have some protection. If I don't know your username and password, I can't log on as you and access your content and your My Documents, things like that. So there is some security already. Encryption does take some processing power. Your machine, your computer, your laptop has to do that mathematical process. We don't, but it has to do all that math to jumble up the document and then to unjumble it when you go to decrypt that information, right? So we don't just blanket encrypt everything. Most things don't need that extra layer of protection, but some things do. Certain sensitive information, we want to add a little bit more protection than just username and password, and that's where encryption comes into play. All right, so now that we understand what it is and why we might want to do it, let's take a look at how we can do it in Windows 10, because it's really easy and it's built into the system. You don't have to download anything, install anything. All you have to do is know how to do it and how to protect that key. Because remember I said the key is how you can unjumble or decrypt that document. If you lose the key, guess what? You can't get back into that content. You can't get it unjumbled. And there's no one that can help you. Microsoft can't even help you, all right? If you lose the key, that's it. The content is gone forever, okay? Uh, and believe me, I've had it happen. So you wanna protect that key. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. All right, so let's take a look at it here. We are going to, I've got some files, and what I want to show you is one, how to do the encryption, uh, and then we'll take a look at how we can protect that key. This also depends on the version of Windows that you're running. If you're running Windows 10 Home, this is not going to be available for you, and it's because of the fact that we can really get ourselves in trouble, right? Because if we don't protect that key and we, we lose it, we can't get back into that information. And not even Microsoft can help us get that data back out. And so Microsoft doesn't want people using it that maybe don't fully understand uh, how this process works and what they need to do to keep it safe. So this is available on Pro and Enterprise Windows 10. So if you're in Windows 10 Home, this isn't going to work for you. All right, so what I want to do is let's say I want to take this file here, demo.ps1. It's just a script file, but let's say I want to encrypt it to make sure that only I can get access to this file. I'm simply going to right click on that file and I'm going to go down to the properties, all the way down there at the bottom where you can see it right there. I'm going to open up the properties of this document. Now, on the general tab, right, on that general tab right here of that document, you'll see there's an advanced button right over here. And that's what I want to click on. I want to get into the advanced properties. One of the options in my advanced properties is to encrypt contents to secure data. I simply put a check mark in there and Windows is going to take care of encrypting that file. So let's see what happens when I check that. I'm going to check it and then I'm going to click OK. Now nothing happened yet because I can still cancel, right? And say, you know what? I didn't want to do that. And I can click cancel and nothing changes. Once I click OK, or apply, that's when the changes are gonna be implemented. And Windows is gonna prompt me. It's gonna say, all right, I see that you wanna encrypt this file. Let me ask a little bit more about what you're trying to do and give you some recommendations, all right? So there's two options here. I can encrypt the file and the folder that the file is in, or I can encrypt just the file, all right? 
Now you might think, well, I just want to encrypt the file. And, and many times that's good enough. Microsoft is going to recommend that you encrypt the folder as well as the file. And there's some reasons behind this. We don't want to get too technical, but when you open a document, there are temporary copies of the document that are created. And if you just encrypt the file, the temporary copy that's created isn't encrypted. Uh, and there's a chance that somebody could get access to it. If you encrypt the folder, the temporary copy, which is created inside the folder, would also be encrypted, and so it can keep you a little bit safer. Um, really depends on you and what you're trying to do. If everything in that folder is sensitive, then just encrypt the entire folder. If you just want to encrypt that file, just encrypt the file. It's, it's going to be okay, all right? I know they recommend the file in the folder, uh, but honestly, it'll work for you if you just do the file as well, uh, which is what I'm gonna do here. Now, do keep in mind, if you encrypt the folder, any new, it'll, it'll encrypt everything, not just what I right clicked on, but everything that exists in the folder will become encrypted. And any new content that I add to the folder, whether I drag and drop it in there, copy it in there, or create a new file in there, it'll automatically be encrypted. So this might be something you wanna do. Maybe you set up a folder that's just for your sensitive information and you choose to encrypt the parent folder. Now you don't have to go back and do this every single time. You can simply dump something in there and it'll automatically become encrypted. So maybe that is a better option for you. Choose which one you want to do. I'm gonna do the file only just for this demonstration to keep it simple, and I'm gonna click OK, all right? Now, what I want you to notice is this little pop-up that occurred right down here, all right? Back up your file encryption key. This helps you avoid permanently losing access to your encrypted files. They're not kidding with this, all right? You will lose access to it, and you can try to go find a, a bad guy and, and they're not gonna get into it, right? They, they, they're not gonna break this Windows encryption as far as I know. I don't think they're gonna be able to. All right, anyway, that's, a, that's another story. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that before that goes away because I wanna show you this and then we'll jump back into the file and the encryption and how that occurred. All right, so here's what happens. It says, hey, do you wanna back up your file uh, and your encryption certificate and the key, right? Back it up now, which is what they want you to do. Back it up later which Windows will remind you again and again and again until you choose to back it up or you say, never mind. Uh, and then the never mind or the never back up, you could lose access to your encrypted files. Don't choose that option, honestly. If you're going to encrypt, back up your key. It's really easy to do. And you should do it to removal media. If I do it to the same drive that I am backing up these files on or encrypting these files on, if I lose access to that, I could lose access to the key as well. Uh, and I won't have the key, right? Um, so I, I need to make sure I put that key on removable media, and then I need to keep that thumb drive somewhere safe. Because if anybody else gets a hold of that thumb drive, they could theoretically take that thumb drive, get that key off of there, and open my files, right? And that's what that's the whole thing we're trying to prevent. So we gotta protect that thumb drive once you export your key, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose, back it up now so you can see what it looks like. The certificate, is a digital document that includes what they call a public key and there's a private key that's associated with it. And these keys work together to encrypt your files. And so we need to back up both the certificate and the private key that goes with it. So we'll click next. And if it's okay if we don't understand exactly what those keys are doing at this point, we just need to make sure we keep them safe. Uh, and it's gonna tell me that I'm gonna use this pkcs number 12.pfx file, fancy name for certificate and private key. And we're gonna click next. I'm just gonna leave all the defaults. Because it has my key, and that key can open up my encrypted contents, it says, hey, why don't you password protect this file, right? That way if somebody does find that thumb drive and they try to get your key, they're gonna to have to break your password first, right? So this will slow them down a little bit, hopefully. So I'm gonna put in my favorite password for that. And that does not look like it's gonna match, so let's try that again. That's one. There we go, that should match. We'll click next. Uh, and then I'm gonna decide where I'm gonna put this. Now, I, again, I'm gonna put it here on my local drive because uh, I don't have removable media handy, but you should put this on a thumb drive. I'm gonna call it my key, which probably wouldn't be good either because now everybody knows exactly what that file is. And we're gonna click save and then next and then finish. And let me make sure I remember where that's going. It's going into my documents. So we can go take a look at it. We'll click finish and it says, hey, the export was successful. We are good to go. And we'll click OK. All right, so now my key is safe. I'm good to go. If something happens to that, if it becomes corrupt on my hard drive, I can go get a copy of that key and I can put it out. 
Uh, I'm not worried about teams right now. Thank you for reminding me about that teams. Now, I will show you that the icon for that file changed a little bit. I can't zoom in any further. I know it's teeny tiny, but there actually is a lock right up on top of that file, letting me know that that file is encrypted. But if I double click on it, notice it opens right up. I didn't have to decrypt it first. I didn't have to do anything special because I'm the authorized user. I have the key, therefore it knows that, hey, when you double click on it, I'm just gonna unlock it and open it for you. If anybody else double clicks on it, they don't have the right key, they're not gonna be able to get access to it. They're gonna get access denied, unable to open the file, all right? So that's how we're gonna turn that on. Uh, now let's take a look at that key. There's a couple places you can see your key and your certificate. Again, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I want you to protect the certificate and the key because I don't want you to lose access to your files if you start using encryption. So do be careful with this. I'm gonna type in certificates down in my start menu and there's an option here for manage user certificates, all right? That's a little MMC or console that I can use to look at my current certificates. And underneath personal, right up here at the top, there's a folder called certificates. And then right out here is the certificate itself. This is the one that got created. And you'll see that the intended purpose is encrypting file system, right? So this is the certificate that allows me to encrypt and decrypt the files and the private key that's associated with it. So if I hadn't done that uh, um, export before, or let's say I lost the thumb drive, right? And I'm not getting that little handy pop-up that says, you need to back up your key. How do I back up my key again? I can open up the certificates console. I can right click on that certificate, all tasks and export. That's gonna launch the exact same wizard. I can walk through the process of exporting that certificate and that private key, all right? So when I click next, it's gonna ask me. Now here, it is gonna say, hey, do you wanna include the private key or not? Yes, you do, right? You wanna make sure you're backing up the private key because the certificate on its own isn't gonna do you any good. You need the certificate to encrypt. You need the private key to be able to do the decryption. So you need both parts. You need both keys in order to uh, work with your encrypted file. So make sure you choose, yes, export the private key. And then again, we'll go through and the wizard is exactly the same. So I'm not gonna do it again. It'll make you password protected. Now, what if I delete that? Don't do this on your system, okay? Uh, what if I delete that certificate? Now the certificate is gone, I'm not gonna be able to get access to my uh, files. Now, because I just did this recently, there's a good chance it'll still let me get in here because it might be cached, yeah. Um, but it won't be long before I won't be able to access that file anymore without that certificate and associated private key. So how do I get it back? I go find that thumb drive that I exported this information to, right? And I did that to my documents and right there, is my key.pfx. So I'm just gonna double click on it, and guess what? Instead of doing an export, we're gonna do an import. We're just gonna bring the key right back in. It's that easy. So I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna bring this back in. Where do I wanna put this? Well, this is for me, the current user. I'm gonna click next, and then it already has the name of the file because I double clicked on it. So I'll click next. I password protected it, so let me type in the right password hopefully, so that I can get it back in there. And I'll click next. And then where do I wanna put it? I'll let it do it automatically. The choice is automatic or you pick. Windows is pretty smart, so I'm gonna let it put it where it thinks it should go. And then finish. And it says the import was successful. And if I go back over to my certificates console and I refresh, there's my certificate back right where it was. And now I can access all those important budget files and bills and documents or whatever else it is that I chose to encrypt. So enabling encryption in Windows 10 to protect your files is pretty easy. The most important part is backing up that key and that certificate to make sure if something happens, you can still access that encrypted files. Hope everybody out there enjoyed watching this one. Stay tuned for more exciting Windows 10 content coming your way.